Hello everyone, I just wanted to give a short little video here um, for getting ready for taking the first exam. Um, this The exam module looks a little different than everything else you'll actually see. still says under construction because I'm recording this video lecture and I haven't published that yet. Um, but the exam is all constructed and ready to go. And we'll take a look at that. Um, but here's what this this module just looks a little different, so I wanted to explain it. Here are the um, the answers, of course, for the previous module. The chapter five homework uh, is all available there. And then there's a study guide for the test. We can take a look at this. Um, this study guide has a list of all the sort of main concepts that we've been talking about over the last three modules. And then it tells you about all the different types of problems you're going to have to deal with how many questions there are in each section, how many points they're all worth, and then the instructions of what I'll be asking you to do. Um, I don't want there to be any surprises here, so please let me know if you're if there is a surprise uh, looking at the study guide. If there's something here you're not sure how to do or you don't remember doing, um, that can help you connect the dots on. Uh, but this, is, uh, this should give you a good picture of what the exam is going to have you do. Um, now, going back... Um, I'm going to um, so whenever you're ready to take the exam um, you'll click here to, to start the exam you've got until October 27th so that's quite a lot of time but remember again this is this is only a uh, this is the hard deadline this is like the absolute latest it's not the recommended uh, time to have it done recommended would be um, sometime between uh, tomorrow, uh, the 19th and maybe into the 22nd, 23rd, something in there. Um, that would be ideal. Um, so you've got until the 27th, but uh, that's, again, that's the hard deadline. I just want to remind you again that there's this difference between the deadlines you see on the calendar, which are like the absolute latest, and then what I was kind of giving with that recommended schedule. Um, I think the recommended schedule will give you the best experience of this course uh, rather than a stressful one or where you're under the gun toward the end finishing everything. So um, uh, that I wanted to say that again too. Um, this makeup exam, don't worry about that for now. The, the makeup exam will only have something going on. Actually, I'm going to unpublish it right now. Um, this will only have something going on once all the exams are done and graded. And then... Um, then I will give you this opportunity to do this makeup exam. But that'll be handled in a little different way than the original exam. But it'll be the same type of problems. Uh, if you're curious about it, really what will happen is when you take the makeup exam, um, if you get, you can sort of take it section by section. And if the score you get on a certain section of the makeup is higher than what you scored on that section of the original exam, then I'll give you the difference in points. So. Um, this is a way that you you don't have to like redo the whole exam. You can just redo the sections that you want to in case uh, something went wrong with something. You want to take a better a second shot at it and, and try to get a better grade. There'll be an option for that, but that that'll happen later. And then I also have this document, these exam score scale percentiles, and this is worth explaining because when I grade these exams, you'll see there's a number of points out of a hundred that um, that the whole exam is worth. Um, but the individual problems have partial credit. You know that's that's nothing weird. But what's weird is that whatever score you get out of 100 on the exam is not your actual score as it'll show up in the grade book. Um, I don't know why this is taking so long to load. That's weird. Um, let's try it again. But um, I'm going to use a chart here. There's a there's a um, Excel spreadsheet here. Um, I might just open it up actually, since this is taking so long. Here we go. So um, both exam one and two have the same sort of wacky grading scale that I use. Over here, you'll see the points out of a hundred that you got on the exam, and this is the actual score that you'll receive uh, in Canvas. So to get an A, to get what would count as an A, you really a 92.5. You really just need to get 75 out of 100 points out of the exam. Now, this is really, why put all this weird complexity into the grading, you may ask? Well, there's a bunch of reasons I have for doing things this way. Probably the biggest one is that I want you to get better feedback from your grade about where you actually are with respect to understanding the material. 
if I didn't, if I if I was working on a normal percentile and I want to make sure that the points that you get are, if I think it's a work that you would get a equivalent of points, then that would mean I wouldn't be able to take a lot of points off, which would mean you might get a lot of problems that look like perfect scores but don't have a perfect understanding. And I want you to know if you don't have a perfect understanding that you don't have a perfect understanding without it um, making your grade suffer ridiculously uh, as a result. So that's why I do things the way that I do them. This is, I mean, this is a 115 course. So this is a, this is an introductory kind of level of course. And the stuff that we're doing is hard and it takes a long time to really, really master. Uh, it's, it's kind of stuff you'll be working on for years to master. So um, I want that reflected in the grade two. So that's how I'm like deciding what's A, B, C, work, etc. Um, but I still, I don't want you to have a, a false idea of what's going on. So like if you're, if you're giving an answer, trying to explain something, and you talk about like half of the things that are important to talk about, then I'm going to give you half credit. Now getting half of them, that might be closer to adequate, if but not exemplary. And I'm, I just want you to let, uh, have a good idea of where you actually are. Um, with those answers. So that's a weird grading scale. Um, don't be um, shocked by the way I'm going to grade it on uh, Canvas because you'll see me mark in the exam itself, you'll see me mark uh, things with partial credit and it might look really bad, but then I will use the fudge system, which the Canvas grading system lets me do, to input the grade according to. Um, this this scale so that's all you can see what the scale looks like you can uh, it's it's up there in the in the module and you can get an idea of, of how I go about this okay so that's everything for an introduction to uh, this module I'm gonna make a second video um, that will when you start the exam you'll get the link to this video uh, this other video I'm going to record and I'm going to walk you through um, all the different problems that are in the exam and give you um, some tips and warnings and stuff like that. So um, next time you'll see me is uh, once you've started the exam. And again, you have 24 hours to complete the exam from when you begin it. So you've, you've got all this time. You've got a big window in which you, many days in which you could be taking the exam. But once you start the exam, then you'll only have 24 hours. So uh, I'll see you then.